then every now and then you still going back to her to bang her again. Why? Because now you're involved in lasciviousness, which means you have no restraints. You can't get enough of the vagina now, bro. You're invested. This is what happened when, when you get new vagina, especially new vagina. New vagina is very interesting. New vagina will make you uh, uh, compromise um, your morals and your integrity. Like you'll put it to the back burner because the new vagina have a way of, of redirecting what you plan. So even though you know it's wrong to bang dude's wife, you have convinced yourself that it's okay. Because you're in lasciviousness. You have no restraints. You can't even stop no more. You tell yourself, starting next week, we can't we can't rock no more, babe. You know what I mean? Like, and she's like, but I really like you. And, and it's like when she say those words that way, you want to bang her again. You get what I mean? You tell yourself, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna do it no more. That's that's my bro, man. You know, that's and you know, dude, he don't know you banging his wife. If he ever find out, bro, if he ever find out what you're doing with this woman, bro, it's a wrap. Recently, Dow manipulated scriptures once again as he took sips from his beer jug on his live stream. He also called Ringo TV a transformer, which I thought was a dumb way to deflect attention from his perpetual adultery. Then, after hearing Ringo response, I said to myself, is this the world we live in? Here you have a so-called pastor who is living in adultery with another man's wife, surrounded by yes mannequins, and he sits there drinking his beer with no fear of Yah whatsoever. Then you got Ringo TV, who comes with all this worldly wisdom, conveying the desperation of the devil to even rebuke thou and save face for the false doctrine of polygyny saying Dal is doing polygyny the wrong way. But you see how the devil play both sides? Any man in this fallen state is capable of doing what Dal has done. Polygyny is the elephant in the room, not Dal. You said if the man finds out that it's a wrap. Okay, well, what is he going to do? <laughs> Last I checked, the judicial system does not prosecute adulterers like under the law of Moses, particularly the law of jealousy, which I'll explain later. At the end of the day, what is this life for? Following the commandments of the Most High, overcoming your sin so you can make it to the kingdom. All this other stuff everybody trying to perfect, y'all wasting your time. All the doctrinal differences, the back and forth fighting, what's his name, what's the holy name of the Most High, what's the name of the Messiah, everybody arguing over debates and all this stupid stuff. None of that stuff is going to get you to the kingdom. That's why I don't waste my time with all that garbage. So you think you have eternal life into the kingdom of God and you don't even know the king's name. <laughs> Can you just go live in a wealthy person's home and you don't know who they are? You don't know their name? You see how stupid that sounds? All I'm focusing on is what matters. Well, what's the name of the what's the name of the Messiah? Savior. That's all I know. Savior. I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be. Well, his name is Yeshua. His name is Yahushai. His name is this. His name is that. How many damn names he got? Obviously, all of y'all crazy. All I need to know is that he's the Savior. If I'm sick and I need medical attention, all I need to know is who the doctor. I don't need to know the name. Who the doctor? Is that the doctor right there? Yes, that's the doctor. Okay, that's all I need. Look, your contention with the name of Jesus Christ will easily land you in the eternal lake of fire. You cannot win this battle against my God. You will lose. The name of Jesus, him being the Alpha and Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, the image of the invisible God, the I am, the beginning and the end, these are the layups in the scriptures. He said before Abraham was, I am. It is the infallible word of God. If you can't accept that, then how do you adhere to the words written in the book? You see, that's a seducing spirit sent to fragment the church to prompt a great falling away. Jamie looking at his wife like, I don't, I don't know what she's doing. So when she did that, it really made it look like he was really doing dirt. You get what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, she wanted to file for divorce because they already put the battery in her back. And then once they got her to do that, she ended up with uh, Elder Becca. And I'm talking about um jamie's jamie's wife his ex she ended up with elder becca so he probably already done did what he had to do with her and probably got rid of her because if she's no longer at straightway then what happened did they give her a writing of divorce that's a whole nother story because if that's the case that means this is a practice that they do you get what i mean like they'll take your wife and then when they get tired of her they'll just give her a bill of divorce to kick her ass out you know what i mean
And I feel sorry for any woman that is a part of straightway that is becoming wives under polygyny with that cult because they're not practicing polygyny based on the Bible. They're not. They're not. They're practicing it in whoredom. These men are gathering wives and gathering wives and gathering wives just to have wives. <laughs> and it's like it's, it's, it's inflating their pride and their ego. Pussy got these men effed up. So where is the law of jealousy if there is a right way to practice polygyny? The children of Israel were under consecration. It wasn't like how it is now where we are living in Babylon. This man can just catch a flight to Miami after sleeping with another man's wife in L.A. So what happens in L.A. stays in L.A. No, there was no escape under the law of Moses because even God will kill you himself if you broke any of those laws. But I wanted to make this video quick and break down this law of jealousy and some of the other stipulations under the law of Moses. So let's go to Numbers chapter 5. We're going to read from verse 29 to 31. It says, this is the law of jealousy. When a wife, while under her husband's authority, goes astray and defiles herself, sleeps with another man, or meaning the man may not have found it out. He may not have found tangible proof here, but the spirit of jealousy comes upon a man and he becomes jealous of his wife. Then he shall stand the woman before the Lord and the priest shall execute this law upon her. So if they didn't have tangible evidence, they would get spiritual evidence. <laughs> this is why polygyny was permitted. You see that verse 31. Then the man shall be freed from iniquity, but that woman shall bear her guilt. In other words, she's going to get stoned to death if she was caught in adultery. If they had spiritual proof or they had tangible proof, she was going to get stoned to death. You see that. So that's just like going to the United States government in this modern day Babylon, going to the U.S. Senate, the House of Representatives, the judicial system or whoever, the court system and bringing a woman, bring a woman to them and say she committed adultery and see what happened. They don't care. OK, they're not upholding that law in this system and you do not have polygyny. If you do not have some form of penal system for men who are just going out here laying with other people's wives, you see how stupid it sounds to uphold polygyny in this modern day Babylon. You can't uphold a patriarchal system under matriarchal control. It's impossible because under the law of Moses, the scriptures say that the most high was with the children of Israel. So when they were going to and fro and escaped from Egypt, the Most High was with them in a, in a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You see that? So they had tangible proof that the Most High was with them. Obviously, Moses saw the back of God and he had to put a veil over his face. There were so many supernatural things. Moses parting the waters, parting the Red Sea. OK, with the power of God. So the children of Israel had the fear of God in them. So they were afraid to commit adultery. You need the fear of the Lord. OK, in order to uphold a system like that. But we know in the New Testament, Christ is saying something different. He's saying this generation here is an adulterous generation. OK, the only penalty for them is the sting of death. The scriptures talk about the sting of death to where a man finds his fate after death. It's a shock to him that he's going to the lake of fire. That's the penalty for disobeying the law of grace. Okay. You can't uphold polygyny. Sanctification only applies to one man and one woman. You do not see the apostle Paul anywhere in the New Testament where he gives an allowance for a man to have concubines and she'll be sanctified and God will sanction that, mar that marriage or multiple wives either. 
God do not sanction the marriage of man to multiple wives in the New Testament because the bloodlines are tainted with sin. Let's read here from Deuteronomy chapter 22. We're going to read verse 13 through 30. It says a verse 13. Okay, now this is concerning laws related to sexual immorality as well. Finding that tangible proof or by the spirit, tangible or spiritual proof. It says in verse 13, if any man takes a wife and goes into her and detests her and charges her with shameful conduct and brings a bad name on her and says, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found she was not a virgin. Then the father and mother of the young woman shall take and bring out the evidence of the young woman's virginity to the elders of the city at the gate. And the young woman's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man as wife, and he detests her. Now he has charged her with shameful conduct, saying, I found your daughter was not a virgin. You see this? This is what you need in a system of polygyny. The, each one of this man's wives would have had to go through this process. The Levitical priesthood was overseeing all of these matters. They were like the congressmen, the judges, so forth. You see what I'm saying? Let's continue. And yet, these are the evidences of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Then the elders of that city, in this manner, the elders, not the Levitical priesthood, but some of them were elders. Then the elders of that city shall take, because remember, Moses, at the advice of his father-in-law, he distributed some of those responsibilities to elders. Okay, and his father-in-law Jethro was advising him not to take so much of a burden on himself because there were so many people, okay? The children of Israel were growing as a nation, so they had elders overseeing these matters. They shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city, then the elders of that city shall take that man and punish him, and they shall find him 100 shekels of silver and give them to the father of the young woman because he has brought a bad name on a virgin of Israel and she shall be his wife. He cannot divorce her all his days. Now tell me what man is going to go through that and have a multiple wives today. How can this law be upheld in this matriarchal society? Okay, matter of fact, if that man decides to divorce that woman or she decides to divorce him, she can take him to court and get child support. Even if she's been an adulterer, she can get alimony, child support, and take him for all he has. You see, you see the hypocrisy here? Verse 20, but if the thing is true and evidences of virginity are not found for the young woman, then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her to death with stone, because she has done a disgraceful thing in Israel to play the harlot in her father's house. And, look, and listen to this verse here. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Okay, this is casting a demon out. Again, if that woman or that man committed adultery, that was an evil spirit. See, Jesus had yet to come and die on the cross for our sins and give us the keys to the kingdom. Okay, in Luke 10, 19, he said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Christ gave us the authority under the new covenant to cast out devils. Here under the old covenant, the only way to cast the demon out, you had to kill the person. You see that? You had to kill this human host. 
to cast the devil out. Okay, and again, it's when it says she's playing the harlot, okay, the old covenant distinguishes between a concubine and a harlot. The new covenant doesn't. They're both fornicators under the new covenant. They're both whoremongers. Concubine is someone who was already uh, permitted to be assigned to a man to bear children for that man. She just wasn't wife material. Okay, but the elders of the nation all knew about it. The whole village, the whole camp knew about it. This right here, though, is harlotry. She secretly went to commit adultery against her husband with another man. So either they find tangible proof or that spirit of jealousy comes upon. See, they were able to verify the spirit. You didn't have false prophets running around here saying, I see, yeah, yeah, I see, yeah, yeah. No, if, if you found a false prophet, that person was also considered a soothsayer. Okay, they was considered a sorcerer. And they were stoned to death as well. See, these niggas ain't talking about this. These niggas just talking about laying up with a bunch of women. That's all they doing. And they know that they can't go to the state and get that extra marital license. So again, they just take her in as a girlfriend, a baby mama, side piece or whatever, and just put the title wife on it. No, it don't work like that. Okay. Verse 22. If a man is found lying with a woman married to a husband, then both of them shall die. This law can't be upheld. Okay, we're under the captivity of the heathen. Okay, continuing on, it says, The man that lay with the woman and the woman, you shall put away the evil from Israel. Verse 23, If a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband, and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, meaning she 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 enjoyed it. Okay, that's that's they would have to verify that by the spirit as well. Because how are you going to hear someone cry out in the city? They could have been in private quarters. So someone may have heard or they may not have heard. But that's why they brought the, all, the matters before the, the elders who brought the matter before the Lord. And they will verify the whole matters spiritually. You see what I'm saying? These niggas ain't doing that today. They just talking out the side of their mouth. It says that she, the woman was betrothed to her husband then finds her in the city and lies with her. Verse 24, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Verse 25. But if a man finds a betrothed, meaning an engaged young woman, in the countryside, and the man forces her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die. But you shall do nothing to the young woman. There is in the young woman no sin deserving of death, for just as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this matter. Because he forced himself on her. She, was, she wasn't in agreement with it. For uh, verse 27. For he found her in the countryside. And the betrothed, the engaged woman, cried out. And there was no one to save her. Okay. Verse 28. If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, but and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out, then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. Verse 30, a man shall not take his father's wife, nor uncover his father's bed. 
that can be put to death for that as well. You see that? This is the law, okay? That man humbling that woman, today that same man in verse 29, that man would be put in prison. He would spend life in prison because we're under a matriarchal society. So anytime these dudes try to tell you polygyny is acceptable, they're, 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 God is a, a God who does things decent and in order. He commanded us, do all things decent and in order. How are you going to regulate polygyny in a matriarchal kingdom? Are you just going to come up with your own laws? Just forsake the laws of the Most High, okay? Then I had some guy come on here talking about God don't change. Well, I know God don't change. It's man that has changed. Sin has progressively gotten worse over the course of thousands of years. Okay, it is man who has changed by the sin that has corrupted his bloodlines. So, and then in that case, if you're saying God don't change, then keep the entire law of Moses. That's what he commanded them at that time. In addition to that, if you're going to say God don't change, then you got to look at the heathen that God appointed over us. Okay, to discipline us. According to the laws written in Deuteronomy 28, prophecies written in Deuteronomy 28. Okay. See, these guys are picking and choosing. They just sitting here cherry picking from the Old Testament. They're not talking about no consecrations. They're not talking about no sacrifices. A lot of the women that they trying to marry up are not virgins. They're not pure. Their fathers are not given dowries. I mean, if they are, then they're doing it the way Pastor Dow is doing it. It's corruption, you see? So don't listen to these guys. I mean, they will lead you straight to hell. Many of them are hell bound, all right? They're not following the most high. But that's all I have for this video. I just want to quickly break down the law of jealousy and also laws of sexual immorality, okay? And explaining why you can't uphold those laws in today's matriarchal society. Okay. Do I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. It's not personal. It's scripture. Don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.